Alright, so this is going to be a small little kind of amalgamation of topics here because just a bunch of stuff's going on and I don't really want to dedicate a video to any specific part of it. Well, this is going to be a sneak peek at what's to come in some cases, but let's get right to it because right now I'm sitting in front of a good old Lenovo C460 and this thing used to be my bedside computer because those were all the rage back in 2013 <laughs> and well as you can see up here this is kind of foreboding I got a new TV <laughs> nothing was wrong with my Panasonic but pretty much Ryan offered to sell me this TV for relatively cheap assuming we could get it back from Texas and we did so I couldn't say no to that and well, I got a nice 4K TV for pennies on the dollar, pretty much. So, yeah, but then again, you know, we're good friends who usually don't care about dollar value when we exchange stuff. As you can see, he got my 27-inch iMac that I was really kind of conflicted on giving away because, as you may know, I don't really have a Mac anymore because I gave my 15-inch MacBook Pro for a Precision 7720. Now, I don't want to make it sound like I regret doing that because I don't if the precision has been very liberating in what I can do with it because it doesn't overheat. I even hit it with Prime 95 for a good solid 30 minutes and the thing didn't even get close to 90 Celsius like any of my Macs did. So, I'm very happy with it. However, the thing that I am mostly regretting is losing iMovie and Final Cut because there really is just nothing on Windows that kind of can do the same thing. Because DaVinci Resolve is free, but it kind of has the issue of being really slow on it, all of my machines, even you know, my Ryzen 7 build, because my Ryzen 7 3700X, so that thing has power to spare. Even with a Quadro P3000 in my Precision, which is better at compute tasks, it's not very good. So uh, that's why I'm really making anything, because I don't want to deal with Resolve, but thankfully Alan came in clutch and said, hey, there's another piece of video editing software you should try, and I'm going to give that a try with this very video. So hopefully that works out. But yeah, I've been missing having a Mac just only because of Final Cut. And unfortunately, my other Macs here ignore the mess. Can't really do Final Cut so well. So the C460 you see here, getting back on topic, is going to be sold off. I don't know who to because I've put out a call for it on my Facebook and failing that, it's going to go on Craigslist. But I'm just done with this machine because of the 4K display, because I used to use this to mirror to my TV so I can control this and it would control what's on the TV as well. And I wish I could do that, but this thing, even with a HD 4600, is really not going to control a 4K TV so well. It may do it at 4K 30, but I need 4K 60 because I get really bothered by the low refresh rate. So I got this thing all set up with Windows 10 Home, which is what it's originally licensed for, and it's going to be sold off using good old Pro Mouse. Just getting it all set up and it looks like we're pretty much ready to send this thing off to a new home. However, I do have something else driving the 4K display and it is this very machine here. This is a old, like if you remember Ryan from 2013, as some of you may, he had a Pentium build and this is the motherboard from that very machine. Still ticking along and it is currently powering my media center. This is my home theater PC here and it's running an RX 550 for the GPU. The problem with this was that Windows 10 does not get along with this board at all. It'll hang at the spinning dots for about two minutes, and this is with an SSD installed, by the way. So it just hangs, and it won't do anything, and it, it's just slow as molasses. So right now I'm running it's running this stream here. This is currently running Kodi with Windows 8.1 underneath because 7 and 8.1 actually work better on this machine than Windows 10. And I really have come around to Windows 10 and I really like it, but this machine brought out the worst in it by far. It was just super slow and fighting me every which way. So 
Yeah, this is a Vosro 260, I believe, originally. But I swapped out the board because the RX 550 will only work in a board with UEFI support. And sadly, the Vosro 260's motherboard does not support UEFI at all. Kind of shocking, so I couldn't just slap the card in there and be done with it. And this is a CPU that was originally in it. It's an i3 of some sort. 2100, I believe. 2120. So... I actually got an i7-3770 in this thing right now, and that came out of a trash Dell XPS 1 that had a failed GPU in it, so that thing was pretty much a lost cause, and well, it's a loss is my gain. This thing is currently a pretty good little machine, if even it's going to be 8 years old in a bit. So it's currently running this with no complaints whatsoever, very happy about that. Down here we got a Mac Mini, and well, that was another thing, Ryan kind of just gave it to me the other day, and I basically made it into a little burn box to make DVDs and CDs for other systems, and it might also be a backup iPod machine, because this thing is currently the iPod interface machine, because it has a FireWire 400 port. So we'll see if that goes anywhere and what's going to happen, but this thing does fully work. It's a mid-2010, so I wish I could just hook that up to the TV and use that, but alas, it is way too old. It, can, it can't even do 1080p YouTube without choking, so it's unfortunate, but what can you do? Also on the update train here, we have this iMac, which is a Core Duo iMac, and I have to say thanks to the 8-bit guy because he had a video where he showed how to modify OS X install disks to work on other systems. And it's been one of my dreams to get an Intel Mac, in this case this one here, that can run Tiger for Intel. The problem is Tiger was never released in retail form for Intel machines. So if you wanted to install Tiger on one of these machines, you had to have the restore disks or your SOL. So with that, I was able to grab a restore disk for a MacBook Pro, the Santa Rosa models, and modify it to work on this, and everything is pretty good, and it's dual booting Mac OS Snow Leopard and Tiger, which is nice, and this is gonna be the iPod machine because it's got two versions of iTunes on it. I should be able to interface with most anything, and it's got FireWire 400, which which is going to be used by this little guy here. So this is a cool little dock connector I got that takes a FireWire 400 cable and just makes it into a dock connector. So I don't have to worry about not having the proper cable because older iPods, case in point, you may have seen it when I panned upward, this one here, which this needs a hard drive and a battery, so it's kind of just chillaxing over here. Need FireWire to restore, or you have to connect them to a FireWire power source because they won't finish a restore otherwise. And that becomes a problem because I plan to flash mod it, so yeah, if it doesn't have a proper power supply, it's never going to fully restore and it's just going to stop you until you do. Not all that fun. So. What, real quick, let's pan back to the Mac, because I did say I regret getting rid of my Mac because of Final Cut to for some, and that's very slight regret. So I have a Note 9 currently as my spare phone, because I still have the 10R and it actually turned one year old today, so that's pretty cool. Pretty much I have the Note 9 out on offer to a friend. I said, hey, if you want to get me like a mid or late 2013 MacBook Pro 13 inch, or in a MacBook Air, something with Quick Sync, because Final Cut and iMovie leverage the crap out of it, I would give just give you my Note 9, because he's been really wanting it. So I have an offer on that, and hopefully I get something out of it, and I can get back to editing without hating myself. So that's pretty much that. Hopefully I get something, and it'll be, and you know, obviously I'll get a video when it gets here. So let's pan upwards to this seemingly innocent little bag up here. If we come in here, Maybe I can pull this down a little bit. You can kind of see there's a switch in there. And you might remember I talked a pretty hefty bit of trash about it earlier this year, I believe. Or was it last year? I can't... Yeah, it was last year. So... <sighs> Some things have changed pretty much with my regards to feelings on the Switch. So I would take it out of the bag, but can't because it was bought by my girlfriend from her work. And well, she is a very, she's very traditionalist and basically I'm holding on to it, but I'm also not allowed to really acknowledge its existence until Christmas comes and goes. So yeah, but my feelings have kind of changed because my main thing with the Switch is like games are stupidly absurd expensive and that's also kind of why I got 
an Xbox One because unlike Nintendo consoles over the years, games get cheap and the Xbox has Game Pass, which is super, super nice. But my feelings have changed because one, again, my girlfriend works at a job where she can buy things uber cheap like the Switch because they were actually, they actually had it on clearance because they're clearing out their stock of them for some reason and I don't know why, but she can get them uber cheap and she can also buy games. That kind of changes things up a little bit. The other thing is that, well, I also have a credit card now, and I know the financial gurus out there are going to be like, that's irresponsible, what are you doing? But I can just buy a game on the credit card and split it up over a couple months if I need to. So I'm no longer stuck when it comes to acquiring games, if I so please. So that's one of the reasons why my feelings have kind of changed, because back when I had my original Switch, getting games for it was kind of hard. Also, a bunch of games were announced right after that kind of just changed me to wanting to get a Switch again, because Link's Awakening is actually one of the games that really kind of put the final nail in the coffin for me, because Link's Awakening was a game that my childhood sucked so my dad bought me a Game Boy Pocket in Link's Awakening way back when. And it was kind of the way that I, to remove myself from a very stressful childhood, just to immerse myself in a game for a bit. So it really holds a very special place in my heart because it reminds me of my dad who, unfortunately, as of next year, it'll be, have been about 20 years since he passed. But it's one of those games I really do want to get my hands on just because it really does maintain a lot of sentimental value to me. That and Nintendo Switch Online was announced, and with Switch Online, basically, it you get a bunch of NES and SNES games. It's not the virtual console yet, but it's getting close enough for me, and I like that it's $20 a year, which is, like, for Game Pass, I pay $15 a month, so $20 a year, not bad, not bad for what you get. So that's why my feelings have kind of changed, because back when I sold off my Switch, none of this stuff really existed, so it's nice that Nintendo kind of got better at things. That's pretty much really it for this little kind of amalgamation of things video and hopefully you enjoyed and well hopefully things go well with the new software I'm going to try and this video will not look like ass. So till then I will see you guys later.